Welcome to Online Worship with Baker Memorial United Methodist Church. My name is Chuck Freiberger. We give thanks for those who have contributed to our worship service. Our musicians, Sam Wyatt and Rob Campbell, tech team, Michelle Claney, Rob Hale, and Mandy Hale, and Pastor David with our message. More information on the following announcements and other opportunities for education, fellowship, and service can be found on the church's website, Facebook page, and the Weekly Word email newsletter. Lent begins with Ash Wednesday services on February 14th, noon in our sanctuary, and at 7 p.m. at the Batavia United Methodist Church with our Tri-Cities congregations. Baker Memorial's Lenten season is February 18th through March 23rd. Into the Wilderness invites the congregation and friends to follow Jesus along the path of temptation and trust, fear and hope, rejection and relationship. The season will be accompanied by sacred worship and song, devotional, studies, service, and more. Lenten season recharge studies will begin Sunday, February 18th. Join one or more of the small group offerings, Walking in the Wilderness, Blueprint for Discipleship and our Wesleyan Faith, and Faith in Life. Register through the church's website and app. The next Growing Faith for Families is also Sunday, February 18th. Gather at 10.30 a.m. in Wiley Hall for Family Faith Time at Popcorn Day for children, parents, and grandparents. We'll learn about praising the Lord no matter what pops up for ages pre-K to adults. Sign up on the church's website and with our app. Thank you for your attention to these announcements. Let us worship. The light and peace of Christ be with you. My name is David Ostleson, and I serve as the pastor of Baker Memorial United Methodist Church. And on behalf of the congregation, we pray God's grace is found in your home, the love of Christ is found in your heart, and the Spirit is present to all of us as we are in ministry together, near and far. We give thanks that you have joined the congregation for this service of online worship. Let the Spirit bless us for this sacred hour. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, we attend to this sacred hour as celebration of the presence of Christ, which takes charge of everything in us and transfigures even that which disturbs us about ourselves. You penetrate those hard and incredulous, even disquieting regions within us about which we really do not know what to do. Do it again, God, and by the power of the Spirit, make us to see more of Christ Jesus upon the faces of humankind from the valleys below to the mountains above. And all God's people said, Amen. Sweet perfume shall rise with 
As we have gathered for worship online, so let us gather in a spirit of prayer. Your prayer requests, joys, and concerns are a valuable offering to Baker Memorial United Methodist Church, and I invite you to share them with us in our prayer chain ministries. You can put those requests into an email or phone them into the church office, and we will share them with those who are praying with you today, near and far, online and together. Let us be a congregation in prayer for all of God's children everywhere. As these petitions are off, offered, uh, they will conclude with Lord of mountains and valleys, hear our prayer. Let us pray together. O gracious and Holy Spirit, be with us as we pray from our homes and our hearts as one people together. May we be bound to each other in the love of Christ as we lean upon God's wisdom and strength as we pray together. Lord of the mountains and the valleys, hear our prayer. We pray for those who suffer and those in trouble. May your peace come upon their hearts and their minds and their bodies. Lord of the mountains and the valleys, hear our prayer. We pray for those who hunger and thirst for mercy and justice. We pray for those without daily bread and access to clean water, those living in situations of poverty, facing eviction, living paycheck to paycheck, needing a break, Lord of the mountains and the valleys, hear our prayer. We pray for those who seek your healing, O God, for our loved ones in hospitals, nursing home, awaiting or recovering from surgery, undergoing chemotherapy or physical therapy, ones suffering with depression or dementia or other mental illness, and medical professionals and caregivers of all kinds. Lord of the mountains and the valleys, hear our prayer. We pray for those celebrating the joy of birthdays, anniversaries, and other celebrations of family and life, for new accomplishments and dreams realized, for the gift of friendship, for ones whose journey with us through the highs and lows of human life, Lord of the mountains and the valleys, hear our prayer. For our neighborhoods, communities, and country, for the work of our local, state, and federal governments, for first responders and providers of essential services, for our local schools and libraries, for civility and debate and respect in all things public and political, Lord of the mountains and the valleys, hear our prayer. We pray for the world, its peoples and its leaders. We pray for the nations of the world that goodwill may be our common cause, that all people everywhere may be freed from tyranny, released from fear, Hostages set free, hunger resolved, wars at an end, dreams of peace and reality. For all suffering the effects of human and natural made disasters, O Lord, from California to Chile and all places in between. Lord of the mountains and the valleys, hear our prayer. For the Church Universal, for the United Methodist Church, and this community of faith, all of our members, our mission, and our partners in ministry. Lord of the mountains and the valleys, hear our prayer. For the good earth and the blessings of the land, sea, and sky, and our stewardship of your creation, Lord of the mountains and the valleys, hear our prayer. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus, whose compassion illuminates the world yet today. Transform us by the love of Christ, that we may be his likeness in the world, living our faith daily, praying constantly, and sharing your goodwill as we serve your children of every age, race, and nation. Renew our often broken and troubled humanity with your divine grace, forgiveness, and peace. As you receive our prayers, reveal the glory and presence of your Spirit, alive in the world and in your church. We are yours, holy God, and you are with us upon the mountaintop and in our valleys. These things and more we pray to you and with one another saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. From the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9, comes our scripture reading for today. Hear the ancient story of Jesus' transfiguration on the mountaintop in preparation for his ministry in the valley below. Listen for the word of God. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In the Hebrew scriptures of the Old Testament and the Christian scriptures of the New, geography plays a pivotal role in the life of God's people, a significant role in the identity and the mission of Jesus Christ, too. As Lent begins in just a few short days, we will be transported into the wilderness to faithfully or failingly follow the, in the footsteps of Jesus our Christ. Mark's Gospel of Jesus' transfiguration places us on the top of the mountain, it's a glorious and stunning sight. We won't stay up there for very long, however. The reality of the valley awaits, but we won't be alone. The glory and grace of God, it goes with us. Would you pray with me? Gracious and holy God, we give thanks for the gift of Holy Scripture, the ancient testimony of your people. We give thanks for Jesus Christ, the light to the world, wisdom for our learning today. Bless my words, the meditations of our hearts, the reflections we have and the actions we take, all in faithfulness to Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Although it is a significant story in the at least three of the Gospels, the transfiguration never makes anyone jump up in the morning and say, hey, it's Transfiguration Sunday, let's go to church. No, Transfiguration Sunday could use a mascot, maybe a cute baby or a bunny with some eggs. Hmm. Nevertheless, the transfiguration gets our attention for the affirmation that it provides to the church of Jesus's identity as he stood upon the mountaintop and the role he played in the salvation of God's people in the valley. Hmm. On the mountaintop is where Jesus is transfigured. Let the church say, ooh and ah. His face changes. Botox? No, 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 no. His drab carpenter's clothing becomes dazzling white. Borax? No, no, no. What might all of this mean? If his birth and baptism didn't convince the world that God had chosen Jesus to bring salvation to all the earth, the transfiguration is God's third attempt. Will there be a fourth one? Hold that thought. Arise, shine. The light has come. 
The future of God's people is so bright, we may need shades. Don't be blinded, but see clearly now into the mystery of God's sacred and glorious scheme. We get a big clue into this mystery by the two biblical figures whose presence confirms Jesus is the chosen one of God. On the mountaintop, Jesus is joined by Moses, the liberator and lawgiver, and Elijah the prophet, whose presence, well, his future presence, his return, would signal the dawn of God's eternal mercy. Mark's gospel is one of continuity and culmination of these Old Testament figures' role and identity. The work of God that Moses and Elijah began, Jesus would fulfill. And then, almost as quickly as they appeared, Moses and Elijah are gone. But, oh, but wait, Peter, James, and John, disciples, are up there too, witnessing the transfiguration event. The King James version of this text records the reactions were to freak us out at all that they had seen and all that they had heard too. Listen, look, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Listen in the Hebrew means to obey. We know that voice, that voice of listening and obeying. That voice speaks with power and authority from across the table or from the front seat of the minivan to the back seat or from the bottom of the stairs to the upstairs. Listen, God's voice is heard on the mountaintop, and all who hear it are impressed to obey. Is it easier to listen and obey God when all is going right on the top of the world? Or is it easier to listen and obey God when we're in the lowest reality of the valley? Hmm, which do you prefer? Have you ever been in the high place of holy encounter with God? The Black Hills of South Dakota, in particular Storm Mountain, is that place where the pine-scented wind transports me into the presence of the holy. Experiences of God's glory can occur in a com combination of physical and spiritual locations, like at a church or a church camp or Emmaus retreat, or even within our beautiful gardens. And an, ep an epiphany awaits us. An epiphany happens by which we enter into this holiness-inspired high, a place and time of God's blessing. We feel transfigured ourselves. We want to bathe in the sunlight. We want to stay, stay up here and let the rest of the world go by and by. Hmm. But then a call comes. A call comes. Hello? Who is this? Reality? I think you have the wrong number. And in the Gospel of Mark, the latter portion of chapter 9, the reality that is revealed, well, that reality really bites. A unclean spirit has terrorized a boy his entire life. When the disciples fail to fend off the attacker, the distraught father brings the boy directly to Jesus, who rebukes the unclean spirit. The boy is released, but is presumed dead. It is Jesus who reaches out to the lifeless body, lifts him up, and immediately the boy stands. In Jesus, the demonstration of God's glorious power experienced on the mountaintop has now come down to the valley to overcome evil, to bring healing and the gift of life itself. Have you ever been in a low place of holy encounter with God? What is your valley? What of the presence of Christ have you seen, heard, and experienced there? Many of us have been to the mountain, and many of us, perhaps most of us, have either been in one or more valleys in our lifetimes, valleys that reveal moments of despair and distress and depression or even the shadow of death. A woman participating in a Bible study on the Psalms likened her valley to the alley behind her home, which had been the site of years of drug deals and gang violence. Would Jesus ever dare enter that valley, she wondered? 
For some, the valley is the empty home after the death of a loved one, or the household suffering from domestic violence, or even one's mind troubled by mental illness, or great sorrow, or regret. Thankfully, we worship and serve a God in Jesus Christ who knows the highs and lows of human life. This is the same God who came from the starry heights and into a lowly manger in the intimacy of an infant's love. This is the same God whose heart was broken open upon a cross to confirm saving grace was available for every person. This is the same God of mountaintop glory, authority, and power who is present to us in all sorts of struggles, personal fears, or troubles of a local or global kind right in our valleys. Oh, thou art with me in my valley and in your valley. God is with us in every valley, wherever it may be. Peter, James, and John, however, had other ideas. They wanted to stay on top of the mountain with tents ready to be put up and a sauna and a cold plunge pool too. Can you believe it? They, like us, desire more of divine discovery and affirmations of faith by which the blessings of God become known. We can't blame them. On the mountaintop, we absorb the sunlight and feel empowered and free like an eagle in flight. Yet the circumstances of life can serve to, to ground us like a dodo in a valley of grief or heartache or more. We respond to God's presence with faithfulness, which is not just a gift for shiny, happy people. No, but it is a gift for all of those who trust that the valley, however we name it, the valley can have some redeeming qualities to it too. To discover the spiritual strength we didn't know that we had, or the circle of friends, of support that walk with us. Oftentimes, the greater awareness that the valley brings is the realization that God's glory is within us, has always been with us, as the light that we carry to continue in hope, helping us to heal, shining forth in the immediate need or later down the path that we travel. Mark tells us Jesus kept that experience of the mountaintop glory secret until the time of his desperate hour, his greatest need, when everything but the power of God had failed him. Upon the resurrection from the dead, Jesus' light would show again the glory was released, never to be confined ever, ever again. And now that glory is gift to us, to each of us, to inform and to inspire and to ignite our faith, whatever the reality of our human everyday life is all about. Listen and look upon this gift. Every once in a while or so often, something is so touching, so incandescent, so alive that it transfigures us almost in a, in a joy and a, a faith that's beyond bearing. The joy of a parent, a playing with a child in the park, the mercy of a nurse in the midnight hour, the calm upon our souls with a favorite piece of music, the celebrating a successful treatment, the euphoria of an Illinois sunset over the hillside, or a long hike in the Fox Valley. Hold on to those experiences, those moments of glory. Trust that it is a gift of God's grace for the reality of our valley, and then let the, that glory shine to bless others in ways holy and good too. Listen and look. The youth group piled out of the van and headed down into the basement of the homeless shelter at the edge of town. Down the flight of stairs and into the dark kitchen they went. One of the leaders found the light switch on the wall. Now we can begin, she said. The group started to pack and sort sandwiches for the next meal. Each sandwich was passed through several pairs of hands in an assembly line kind of fashion. The high schoolers began rating how each of the sandwiches was packed. The, this one is a seven. This one is a four. Others rated higher and other sandwiches rated lower. 
One of the adult leaders with the group realized what the kids were doing and felt called to act and to pray. At the end of the particular task, she asked each member of the group to take one of the sandwiches and follow her from the kitchen and into the dining area of the shelter. We're, we aren't going to have to eat these sandwiches, are we? said one of the kids rather cautiously. The leader gathered the group in a circle near where all the people were waiting to get into the doors to eat. She invited them to sit on the basement floor and then asked each person to hold onto the sandwich and listen. A sense of quietness fell over the group, though the crowd waiting to get into the shelter was quite loud. The leader asked them to imagine trying to sleep in turbulence and chaos with no sounds of, well, serenity. As they continued praying, she asked them to, well, with their hearts, to look upon each person who would come through the doors and where they had come from to eat at the shelter that day, knowing the sandwich may be their only meal. She invited the youth to bless the sandwich and to say a prayer for whomever it would feed. Opening their eyes, they found a humble and glorious stillness that carried on within each of them as they walked into the valley of the awaiting crowd. The transfiguration of Christ confirms God's glory is our blessing in every part of our life's landscape. The ministry of Christ confirms God's will is our good work with every portion of our Christian life. Let us be transfigured in glory and stillness for the valleys of our reality. And the God who has blessed us in the beginning will be the God who blesses us in our end. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen.
Thank you once again for your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness that you have shared with Baker Memorial United Methodist Church. We rejoice in all the ways that God is calling us to be generous with our time and talent and financial resources towards the mission and ministry of our congregation. Check out those announcements that were featured at the beginning of our worship service and use them as an invitation to those you know who are looking for a community of faith such as Baker Memorial Church and use them too as you seek ways to participate in the life and in the ministry of this congregation. May God be given all glory in all the ways in which we share of our time and talents to make the light of Christ shine here and near and everywhere. Thanks be to God. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God and maker of us all. Amen and amen.